TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, dubs personal sacrifice as a key ingredient to Israel's national resilience. Lebanon is to hold parliamentary elections in March of 2022 amid dire domestic tensions. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is set to travel to the Russian Black Sea resort of Sochi tomorrow for a meeting with President Vladimir Putin. Moscow has informed Damascus that it is set to dismantle its local militia, the 8th Brigade of the 5th Assault Corps, that was strategically deployed in a number of locations on the Syrian side of the Golan Heights, primarily near Dara city. The soon-to-be-dismantled militia, which was established on November 2016, is mostly composed of rebel militants who surrendered to the Assad regime and subsequently joined to serve under Russian patronage receiving monthly salaries and following orders exclusively from Moscow. Nevertheless, ahead of the Russian decision, the 8th Brigade commander Ahmad al Maouda had reportedly fled to Jordan, and the militia is currently in the process of integration into the Syrian army as an operational brigade of its military intelligence. The importance attached to this development stems from recent history, when on September of 2018, Russia instructed its militia to withdraw from Western Dara governorate from the border fence with Israel and concentrate its force primarily on the eastern part of the territory near the border of Syria's southern neighbor Jordan. The vacuum that emerged following the Russian decision at the time immediately ratcheted up efforts by Iran and its regional proxies, including Hezbollah, to entrench militarily in those abandoned territories, forcing Israel to direct much attention into confronting those relentless efforts from becoming successful. It is worth mentioning, however, that Russia and Israel have a well-refined coordinated mechanism to de-conflict between their respective militaries, which operate in the very same sectors across Syria. Separately, increased Russian activities in the eastern Mediterranean Sea has drawn Jerusalem's attention. Hence, in a meeting scheduled to be held in the Russian Black Sea resort of Sochi tomorrow, upon the invitation of President Vladimir Putin, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett will aim to convey Jerusalem's concerns to the Russian leader and will seek to bolster the deconfliction mechanism to guarantee Israel's freedom of action, absent of miscalculation from either side. It is also worth mentioning that while the Islamic Republic of Iran, by means of its Revolutionary Guards Quds Force, continued to relentlessly seek its entrenchment along Israel's northern front, its most powerful proxy in Lebanon is faced with increased challenges of its own. Following deadly clashes that erupted in Beirut on Thursday of last week, and despite instructing his followers to stand down for fear of the country plunging into a full-fledged civil war, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah threatened his domestic Lebanese enemies, with chief focus on the Christian Lebanese forces bloc, from testing his organization's power, which according to Nasrallah, includes 100,000 Lebanese militants standing at the ready. The <laughs> وتختلف عن كثير من حوادث مشابهة قد تكون حصلت في الآونة الأخيرة وعم بحكيك بس باللبنانيين اللي هن لبنانيين منذ أكثر من مئة سنة مش من عشر سنوات مدربين ومنظمين ومهيكلين ومسلحين وأصحاب تجربة وأصحاب روحية ولو أشير مش إذا أمروا ولو أشير لهم أن يحملوا على الجبال لا أزالوها اكتوب عندك مائة ألف مقاتل مائة ألف مقاتل In his televised address from an undisclosed bunker, the Iranian proxy leader went on to reject claims that his organization's attacks last week, which targeted predominantly Christian neighborhoods in the Lebanese capital, 
did not mean that Hezbollah is the enemy of Christians. Rather, Nasrallah sought to disassociate the Christian Lebanese forces from the Christian communities in Lebanon, which they aim to protect. It is important to know that while tensions remain high, the lately appointed Lebanese government of Prime Minister Najib Mkati has been put on notice earlier this week when the country's legislature voted to hold legislative elections on March 27th of 2022, leaving Premier Mikati only a few months to try to secure a crucial IMF recovery plan amid a deepening economic meltdown. While the majority of these sectarian political factions voted in favor of the elections, the Christian Free Patriotic Movement of President Michel Aoun which is allied with Hezbollah, has voiced its objection to the proposed date for fear that its followers will opt to support other Christian parties that have not aligned themselves with Hezbollah. تم التصويت على موعد 27 اذار ضيال الوطن الحر اعترض عم بيقول بده يطعن وكثار نصحوه ما يطعن ولكن نحن بهمنا تصير الانتخابات بضمن مواعيدها الدستوريه وكل انسان يعبر عن رايه لانه الانتخابات مش معموله للسياسيين، الانتخابات معموله للناس للاسف كثار من السياسيين بينسوا الامر. Rejecting the allegations against his faction, Former Foreign Minister Gibran Basil, a son-in-law of President Aoun, who is sanctioned by the United States for both corruption and doing business with Hezbollah, claimed that a Christian fast and bad weather conditions were the true reason for their rejection. Despite these voiced claims, the legislative elections in Lebanon are expected to be held during the first half of 2020, leaving little time for required reform and proof thereof to secure crucial aid from the International Monetary Fund. يعني نأمل نأمل إنه يعني ال الجهد اللي بيتم الآن يؤدي بنا إلى التوصل لكل البيانات والمعلومات الكافية ل إن يكون عندنا خطاب للنوايا وهذا تحت إمرة الحكومة ومصر في لبنان بس لازم إن يكون في البداية كل التقارير والبيانات المطلوبة. Meanwhile, amid relentless efforts to prepare for a military campaign against Iran's nuclear program, Israel is closely monitoring the perpetually fragile situation along its northern front with both Lebanon and Syria. Speaking at a memorial ceremony for the IDF's Armored Corps last night, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi highlighted the extensive efforts that are implemented daily to ensure the security of the Jewish state and its peoples. Even in this time, the soldiers and soldiers are on the ground. They are fulfilling the mission of the army and are dealing with our enemies in six zeros. There is no state in the world that is in front of this area, and there is no state in the world that is working with intensity. The army of the army is on the ground and on its own, and for this reason, he is on many times שיטות של התקפה. צה"ל תוקף, מסכל ומשמיד איומים באזור כמעט על בסיס שבועי, באמצעות פעילות גלויה או חשאית, לאורך הגבולות או בעומק הזירות, בפעילות ממוקדת או במבצע כולל. חלק גדול מהפעילות הוא תוצאה של יוזמה והחלטה. כאלו הם המבצעים שבמערכה שבין המלחמות. כזה היה מבצע חגורה שחורה לפני שנה וחצי. שעליו החלטנו כדי להפסיק את פעילות הטרור של ארגון הג'יהאד האסלאמי בעזה, 
וכך היה בתגובה לירי הרקטות לעבר ירושלים. לא הסתפקנו בתגובה, לא הגבנו, בחרנו לצאת למבצע, להכות בעוצמה ולהיות שומרי החומות. General Kochavi further highlighted the importance of strengthening the national resilience of Israel by emphasizing the importance of self-sacrifice. כדי להתקיים כאן במדינה צריך להגן. כדי להגן צריך להילחם ולנצח. כדי לנצח צריך נכונות להקריב. בין אם במלחמה, בין אם בפעולות מול טרור שנטמע באוכלוסייה, הנכונות להקרבה היא עיקרון שצריך וחייב להמשיך ולהיות חלק מהותי מרוח העם והנכונות להקרבה היא לעולם חלק מרוח היחידה והלחימה בקרב וחלק מהמפתח לניצחון. בשביל מדינה שעדיין נלחמת על ביטחונה היכולת לשאת אבדות ולהתגבר היא חוסן לאומי שחובה להמשיך ולטפח. רבים מבינים זאת רבים בעם יודעים מה חשוב, ערכי ויקר, ואנחנו, אנחנו גאים להגן על העם הזה. אנחנו גאים לא פחות בנכונות של דורות, דורות רבים, להתייצב בחוד החנית, וכזהו גם הדור הנוכחי. I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Russia in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tov Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.